iPadOS 13.4 brought some really interesting features to the iPad that I want to cover. The first you've probably heard about, but it's true mouse support. This is no longer just an accessibility feature. You can pair any Bluetooth mouse you want to it. Just go into settings, Bluetooth, and connect your mouse. I've even tried a few USB mice as well, and they worked great. Unlike the accessibility feature, the Magic Mouse 2 and the Magic Trackpad 2 is supported as well. This is great because they have native gestures to do handy tasks, but we'll cover those in a bit. First, let's talk about the cursor. Once you have a mouse paired, just move it around. You'll see a grayish circle. That is the cursor. You can move it around and as it gets close to certain touch targets, it will highlight them. For text editing, the cursor will turn into an eye beam just like on the Mac. You can drag and select text just like on the Mac. If you stop moving the cursor, it will disappear after a bit, and now you just have a normal iPad. I love this implementation. I can use the cursor whenever I want, and when I'm done, it just goes away. You can click on certain objects in the system to get shortcuts to system-wide features. For example, if you click on the battery icon, you'll get Control Center. If you click on the clock, you'll get Notification Center. If you click on the home bar, you'll go home. There are also a few ways you can push the cursor beyond the screen to activate features. First is if you push it past the right edge of the screen, you'll get slide over. From there, you can open up the slide over multitasker. Just push it back like you did to summon it to dismiss it. If you push the cursor below the bottom, it will bring up the dock. If you keep pushing, it'll go home. And if you push up towards the top, you'll get notification center. After all this was announced, I ordered a Magic Trackpad 2 because there are some gestures only it can do. The first being three finger swipe up to go home. If you keep going with this gesture, you'll get multitasking. Three finger swipe to the right and to the left to jump between apps. On the lock screen, you can just click to wake it up. If your iPad has Face ID, it will then unlock and you can just use three finger swipe up to go to the home screen. With Safari and other apps that support it, you can do the two finger swipe to go back a page and then do it again the other direction to go forward. With apps like LumaFusion and Ferrite, you can two finger swipe across the timeline to navigate. You can even pinch to zoom as well. The Magic Trackpad 2 has become my favorite pointing device to use with the iPad. If you go into the settings app, go to general, trackpad, or mouse, and you can make a few changes. The first you can change is sensitivity. Next, you can change how the secondary click happens. Secondary click acts as though if you long pressed on something. So if we were to do this on an app, we'd get its contextual menu. In accessibility, pointer control, you have a few more things as well. You can change things like the cursor size, color, and how quickly it disappears. You can also turn the snapping feature on and off if you want a more traditional cursor. For now, I think I'm going to leave it on and give it a go. If you wish to use the assistive touch option like we were to get mouse support before iPadOS 13.4, you can program any extra buttons on your mouse here. If you do not wish to leave that on, your customized buttons will go away. I wish this wasn't just an accessibility feature. There are definitely a few bugs that need to be worked out with the mouse support on the iPad. Some animations like bringing up the dock can be kind of wonky. And then some third-party apps definitely need some work. You can tell they were using custom UI because none of the snapping works. This is all new and I'm sure it'll get worked out. But I especially love how easy it is to edit text with it. I can't wait to start editing videos and audio with it as well. The next feature I want to talk about is the new accessibility feature called Full Keyboard Access. Go into Accessibility, Keyboards, and turn this on. This will do two things. First, enable full keyboard navigation of the entire iPad. Second, it'll add custom keyboard shortcuts. When navigating, you can use the arrow keys, Tab, Shift and Tab, Enter, and others to get around. You'll see a rectangle highlighting what is selected. You can change how this works in the full keyboard access settings. To me though, the more interesting feature of this is under Commands. Here you can assign keyboard shortcuts to actions and shortcuts. That's right, I got my keyboard shortcuts shortcut. Unfortunately, it triggers the notification and you still have to hit run, but we're getting there. Just tap on the command and hit any keys you want to be able to trigger that shortcut and then hit done. Now when you hit those keys, it'll run that shortcut. There are other things than just shortcuts in here, so be sure to check it out. I hope this follows like the mouse support feature did and becomes a full system feature. Finally, shared iCloud folders are here. In iCloud, take a folder you made, it can't be one of the ones from an app, long press on it, and share it to whomever you want to collaborate with. Now you can both work on it. 
I'm happy to see this feature is finally here and I'm gonna be running it through its paces, but for now I'm still going to keep Dropbox around. 13.4 is a great release with some awesome features. I hope to see more of these smaller updates that bring features like this in the future. I do have one of the new iPads on its way as well, and we'll be doing a full review, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.